There ain't no sunset. Mm, there's no cliff, just rocks. So how is this sunset cliffs? Push me to the edge. All my friends are, oh! All right, what's up? It's your boy Yankee Sam 11. And a couple weeks ago, I was on a stream and I asked y'all, how many of you guys are single males? And like 80% of y'all were like, I'm single and I'm a male. And first of all, don't be thirsty because ain't nothing good ever come out of being thirsty. My advice to single friends who ask my single ass advice on love. But second of all, y'all don't need someone to go on dates. You could treat yourself. You could go on a date with yourself. And that's precisely what we're going to do today. And to start it off, we're going to eat the best burritos in San Diego. I ain't talking about no Lolitas, no Filbertos, no Rigobertos. Nah, Lucha Libre. It's bad! What Lucha Libre got is they got this Adobada California burrito. If y'all know what Adobada is yet, y'all slipping. This is the goat food in San Diego. You go to LA, they got some bootleg Adobada called Alba Store. Trash, garbage, that's not what you want. If you think you can name a better burrito place, leave it in the comments below. But yeah, let's go order. All right, so fun fact, we uh, got the bag, but there's no seating. So, I have an idea. Let's just go here. Yo, so we made it to Sunset Cliffs, but there is no sunset. Like, what is that? San Diego's a bunch of cappers. But look at this burrito. Like, sheesh. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. Look, you guys have already seen the title by now. You know what this video is about. It is supposed to be about how I got a job at Bleacher Report. To be honest, I don't think the story is particularly interesting, but maybe it helps one of you guys out in your job search, maybe now or maybe in the future. But basically my, my freshman and sophomore year of college, I applied to a whole bunch of internships, but I didn't know in order to get an internship, you have to have previous internship experience. It's a huge pyramid scheme. Like you can't get into the industry without already being in the industry. So I was applying to a whole bunch of stuff, not getting any responses. But I remember I got one interview and like this might be like one of the only interviews I got during those two years and it was for some small company you guys might have heard of them named ESPN That is blasphemous! I remember this interview I completely bombed it This is bad! This is very Stephen very bad! I remember one specific question they asked me was do you have any experience in After Effects? In case you don't know what After Effects is it's just a video editing software and I had zero experience at that point I told him, yeah, I, I don't have any experience. And I knew at that point, based on the, the interviewer's tone, I'm not gonna get this job. <laughs> and the interviewer was super nice. He uh, actually sent me an email afterwards and he's like, hey, keep working on your craft. I hope you uh, keep growing and maybe we'll connect again at some point. That was basically the only interview I ever got my freshman and sophomore year of college. And those summers, I just spent it screwing around, making YouTube videos. I was traveling. I think I was in Hong Kong and Korea. And in the bay at some point, that was a whole bunch of fun. But I, I didn't do anything that was particularly related to my career. And once junior year rolls around, I'm screwed because I have zero professional experience and you need professional experience to get professional experience. Makes no sense again. And so I'm desperate. And so I made the spreadsheet and I'm like, I'm gonna work my butt off to get an internship this summer. And I'm gonna have a little less hungry version of Sam explaining this. And while he explains that, I'm gonna eat. This was the spreadsheet I was using for my internships. Um, you got the company on the left, the job title after that, and then job description, and a link where I could find the job. Uh, then we got just some deadlines and then extra notes. And clearly that one I uh, did not try. So probably didn't get that one. But as you can see, a lot of nopes. This is a color coordinated also. So the blue is like straight newspapers. Green is more like the sports media companies, and then pink is like entertainment. And so you got stuff like, I guess I consider ESPN entertainment that at that point. And then of course we got the orange, which is just straight sports. Look, I even applied to the Angels guys and the Warriors. Apparently I applied to 63 different internships and I think I got interviewed for two of them. Not good guys, not good. Anyways, junior year, I get interviewed for that same ESPN position that I got denied the year before. This time with a different person. And when they asked me this time, do you know After Effects? You know what I said? Hell yeah. I've been grinding that over the past year. I end up killing interview after interview after interview with ESPN, get to the final round, and I'm pretty sure I got this job. But then something happens. Something called COVID. And then I get an email a couple weeks later. Hey man, 
really sorry to break it to you, but we canceled the internship because of COVID. And so it was another summer, another year, where I did absolutely nothing. Stayed at home and made YouTube videos. <laughs> well, that's not true. The one thing I did was take summer school classes so that I could graduate by December, a little bit early. But that in itself was also a problem because December came around and uh, I was still unemployed. <laughs> Couldn't find a job between May until December. And don't get me wrong, I was searching and grinding hard. I was literally that dude on LinkedIn every single day searching by like new jobs posted in the past 24 hours because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss a single job. But I'm searching and searching and maybe it's because of COVID, maybe it's because something else, but I just couldn't find a job. I will say though, did a video on this, but part of me was tanking interviews. Like I was purposely failing interviews and the reason for that was because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And a good example of that is that I actually did get one offer, single offer to work for USA Baseball. And at that point, thanks to you guys, Yankee Sam 11 was popping off. I had reached like, I think a thousand subscribers and I was so hyped. But I didn't know at that point if I wanted to go into media or video or baseball. And so I was questioning these things and I guess I reached a point where I declined the offer. How do you do that? How do you do that? What the hell is going on? I took a leap of faith and I'm like, I think I like content more. I think I like producing stuff more. And so let's try and find a job in that rather than working on the baseball side of things. So I stayed on my grind. I stayed applying to different things, stayed on my LinkedIn until one day I'm in Texas uh, for a different reason. And I get an email from who would become my manager at Bleacher Report. And she's like, hey, I want to interview you for a position at Bleacher Report. I'm in Texas, I'm enjoying my time, a little vacation. So I'm like, all right, for sure I'll interview. And I say that very casually, but a little secret, I grind hard for job interviews. Once I get the interview, I know I got to impress. And so I research like hell. And for interviews for like media companies, the one thing you gotta do, big tip here, you gotta research their specific company and you gotta figure out what their brand is like. And Bleacher Report, it's different from like ESPN. ESPN is different from Fox Sports and you gotta figure out what makes them different. And it's very, very helpful if you know specific videos that you can call back to. And so memorize a couple videos, I wrote down a couple videos and I ended up talking about those videos in my interview. And I remember my manager said afterwards, like it really impressed us how much you knew about our company. So that's a big tip, know the company you're applying to. That was like the first half of the interview and the second half I remember talking a lot about Yankee Sam 11 about how at that point we reached like our first million views and that's crazy too guys. Like I'm so thankful uh, that you guys made it possible. But I thought that interview went okay and I get invited back to a second interview, this time with um, my manager's manager and that interview was weird, like super, super weird. The only question I was asked was tell me about yourself. And I did my little spiel. I usually end up talking about Yankee Sam 11 a lot. And then she didn't ask a single question the rest of the interview. All we did was talk about our favorite YouTube channels. She was bringing up like old references to like prank versus prank. I don't know if you guys remember that. Goaded channel, goaded, like that was my childhood. We were just talking about these ideas and I remember leaving that interview and I'm like, I don't think I did that well. It was super awkward. I expected her to ask questions, but she would just tell stories and then just pause. And that pause would be my opportunity to talk. But I'm like, oh shoot, like, I guess I never picked up on that. I would just kept expecting the question. So there would always be awkward silences of like one or two seconds. But good thing it was all online. So I could just blame it on the laggy internet. But yeah, I left that interview. I remember texting my friends. I'm like, I don't think I got this. I, I did pretty poorly on this, to be honest. But a couple weeks later, I get an email and I got the position. Like if I look back at my entire career and that makes it sound really long, but it's only been like a year, less than a year since I graduated school. I look and I, it's impossible to not see God's hand in all this. Like I had zero professional experience. I was literally at home in my room making YouTube videos. Like that's what I was doing. And some dang reason that only God knows, he led me to this opportunity at Bleacher Report. And to be honest, I learned so much from doing this YouTube channel. I probably learned more in those summers when I was grinding these YouTube videos than I would have ever learned from a professional experience. Like I learned so much more about content and how to create it through this channel than I probably could have learned at any other company. Like, and if you ask me after my ESPN interview, the first one, like, man, how do you feel? I would have said, I felt terrible. 
I completely bombed it. Like one of the key technical questions, I just said I couldn't do it. I have zero experience in After Effects. But who knew that was just preparing me. That gave me the knowledge of what I didn't know. And that's an important thing. You gotta know what you don't know. I didn't know at that point that After Effects was a necessary thing. And so I grinded my butt off. I started learning that. It was basically all just used on Yankee Sam 11, but there's proof there. There's proof in the pudding. I, I show them the video and I'm like, that's After Effects right there. And they're like, wow, okay, you put in the work. Who knew that by me not having a job, but me just being able to create videos on my own, I would end up at Bleacher Report? The answer is only God. And that's pretty much all I got to say. How did I end up at Bleacher Report? It was an act of God, man. Now you're probably wondering, what did I do at Bleacher Report? Now, you know I can't give you that right off the bat. If we get to 50 likes, I'll talk about that. But if not, I guess you guys are never figuring out what I did at Bleacher Report. For all you know, I could be scrubbing toilets. But yeah, I was at Bleacher Report as of a couple weeks ago. What am I up to now? Guess you'll just have to wait and see. But hey, we kind of got a sunset.